If you just got a PS5, these are the accessories you need. So after almost a year of waiting, we finally got the update on the PS5 that lets us install our own SSD. Now I know 825 gigabytes seems like a lot when you get your new PS5 and open it up, but once you start downloading PS4 games, PS5 games, and seeing how big they are, especially if you're a Warzone player, that storage fills up very quick. So being able to just buy an SSD, throw it in the console, and potentially double your storage, that's a pretty cool thing for most people. Now there are plenty of options you can go with to get an SSD for the PS5, but the thing you have to remember is that you need a heatsink. If somehow you manage to get an SSD that doesn't have a heatsink, even though I just told you not to, you can actually go on Amazon and buy one that you slap on the side. It really just sticks on, but you got to make sure that it doesn't make the SSD too tall because the space in which you have to put the SSD in the console is kind of limited. Like if you get this fat heatsink that's like six inches tall, you're not going to be able to put that plate back on that covers it up, and that's bad. And the reason you need a heatsink for your drive is because when you're reading from the drive or writing to it, it heats up the drive. That thing is basically just sitting there right on your motherboard in a little enclosed space that has no access to the fan. So if your drive is heating up, it's gonna slow down. And then what's the point of having an SSD in the console in the first place? Because the PS5 is so good with the SSD. That's what gives you the fastest loading times you've ever seen in your entire life. Also, those plates that go on the side of your PlayStation, those are plastic. So if your SSD is heating up and it heats up too much, you might get a nice smell of burning coming through your nostrils and then you'll be like oh there's a massive hole in the side of my playstation 5 and then your house burns down and you have to file insurance payments and then how are you going to get a new ps5 if you, if you melt your other one it's just a bad time all around so when it comes to buying an ssd there are a ton of options i went with the wd black sn850 now this one also comes in a non-heat sink version which is what i initially got but it was really easy to just get an external heat sink to slap on the side and it was good to go honestly it worked without the heat sink it was reading and writing fast faster than the internal drive in the PS5. I only did it with a couple games, but yeah, I, I was like, uh, I think I'm gonna take it out, get a heatsink for it. Another option people really like is the Samsung 980 Pro. Now this one is a new option being added to the list because they didn't have a version of it with a heatsink, but they caught on to the fact that people with PS5s are spending a lot of money on new SSDs. So they threw a heatsink on the side of it and they said, look, we've got one that's compatible with the PS5. That's a great option. They're all around the same price too, so I don't think you're gonna lose out if you go for one over the other. But if you're on a budget, you can go with the Gigabyte Aorus. You can get a one terabyte version for 170, and then you can get a two terabyte version for 350, which puts it pretty much cheaper than all the other options. And then finally, you have the Fire Cuda 530 from Seagate. These are all within the same price range, and if you haven't gotten one yet, I would start looking now because November's coming up. That's when Black Friday is. That's when the moms are gonna go out to the stores and buy the Playstations and the SSDs. They're gonna snap everything up, and you, the actual gamer who just got Call of Duty Vanguard, and you wanna play Warzone, but it's 500 gigabytes now for some reason and you don't have an SSD, you're gonna be so disappointed you didn't listen to me when I told you to buy one. So just buy one now if you have a PS5. You're gonna need that extra storage. Oh, and of course, we have all of these linked down in the description. It's easy access. Another option you have if you're a person who plays a lot of PS4 games is to get an external SSD. Now, I actually use one of these on my console. I use it to edit every PS Ready video as well. It's called the Samsung T7, but you can get older versions on eBay for cheaper. That's a little hack for you. So a two terabyte option is 300 bucks and a one terabyte option is 140. Honestly, it lines up pretty well with the internal SSDs you can buy, but the difference here is that these things connect to the USB-C port on your PlayStation 5. So if you're saving a lot of screenshots, you have a lot of PS4 games, you're taking a lot of gameplay videos, this is a great option because then you can just plug it into your computer and have everything right there good to go. I have another one of these. I keep my entire Steam library on. If you have a Thunderbolt port on your PC, you can just run like games off of them, which is pretty cool because they're so fast. But yeah, as far as the external drives go, I would go with one of these USB-C ones over a USB 3.01, you know, like a spinning disk hard drive. Even though you're not going to be able to store PS5 games to it, it's still going to load PS4 games faster. So the next accessory you definitely should buy that you might not be thinking about is this, the PlayStation 5 Media Remote. I actually unboxed mine already, so here, here it is right here. It looks awesome. It's just a little white remote that uses AA batteries. But the reason you're going to want this is because the PS5 is actually a killer media streaming system center device machine. So in my living room, I have a Roku TV and I liked it just fine before, but over the years, the Roku side of it has been slowing down a lot. When I boot up YouTube TV and I'm trying to watch AMC Fear Fest, getting to the menu where it's actually like showing me the channels takes a long time. And I don't know if you've ever loaded up HBO Max on a Roku, but you could be sitting there for like 45 seconds guessing whether or not the app is working at all. The PS5, you don't have to worry about any of that. It all works great. But the reason you want this media remote, if you are 
are using your PS5 as a media device is the battery in the dual sense is horrible. It dies so quick because there's an LED light on it. And if you're using it while you're watching a movie or anything like that, you can turn it off manually when you're done using it. But then there's menus on the screen and it's just annoying. You always forget to turn it off. And then when you want to go play a game, the battery's dead. And that's where the media remote comes in because it can control your PS5 from go. You can turn it on and off with the remote because it has a built-in PlayStation button and they smartly put buttons on the remote that open up apps like YouTube, Spotify, Disney Plus, and Netflix. I don't want to pretend this thing is the best gift from God or whatever. I just really like it and uh, it's only 30 bucks. So if you don't have one just yet, you should go pick it up. Again, it's linked down in the description. Speaking of the DualSense battery sucking, if you're getting annoyed plugging that thing into the front of your PS5 with the USB-C cord like I was because it's in my media center, it looks horrible when I'm charging controller out the front, you should check out this official PlayStation charging dock for the DualSense controller. This thing's pretty simple. It has a cord that plugs into the wall. You drop your controller on it when you're not using it. I shouldn't have to explain how a battery charging device works to you, hopefully. But the cool thing about it is if you hold it vertically, it just looks like a PS5. They really thought ahead on this one and made all the accessories look like the PS5. So if you did pick up the Meteor Remote and your DualSense is always dying, this is a good option for you. This thing is also 30 bucks, just like the Meteor Remote. So for the price of a game, you could get the Meteor Remote and keep your DualSense charged all the time and your batteries will never die. Now, an area where Xbox has had Sony themselves beat for two generations now is having pro controllers for their consoles. The Xbox Elite controller is pretty good. It's very expensive for sure, but people seem to really like it. And everyone's been kind of waiting for Sony to have a competitor. But in the meantime, we have some custom options here that I think are pretty good. So the first one I've got is this clear controller from our friend Cody. This one is crazy. It has LEDs all over it and a little copper thing on the touchpad that when you touch it, it changes the LED colors and the way they blink in the controller. It looks really good. He did it all custom himself. And also the battery lasts about two times longer on this controller because he put a fat battery in it, which I really appreciate. Some other features included are that the triggers are buttons, which is good for first person shooters, obviously, if you're not having to pull the trigger all the way. Now that does get rid of the whole like adaptive trigger thing. But again, if you're playing an FPS, I feel like most people playing competitively have already turned that feature off because while it is cool and stuff like Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War story, but when you get into multiplayer and start dying because you got to yank the trigger so hard, you just turn that thing off right away. So if you really want to get the competitive edge, these button triggers are awesome. And then on the back, you've got paddles that you can remap to any button you want. This is great in my favorite game to play on my PS5, Destiny 2. I do reload and jump on the paddles and it's awesome. You never really have to take your thumbs off the sticks that way, which is the whole goal because if you're playing competitively, right? Like if I'm an Iron Banner or Trials and I'm taking my thumbs off the sticks, that's me just sitting there looking like an idiot waiting to get sniped, you know? Now if I map some buttons to these back paddles, I have a little bit more of a competitive edge. And guys, I am not that great at multiplayer gaming. I need that edge if I can get it. But if you're looking for a more official option that's still not necessarily official, you can also go with the Hex Gaming Controller. Now the difference here is that if you go on Hex Game Insight, you can customize the hell out of this thing. You can pick the colorway from top to bottom. You can change any part of this thing. I made mine a little bit more understated. I went with a black and red chrome look that looks kind of like Miles Morales to me. I don't know why, maybe just because it's black and red, but you can also customize things like the sticks. You get a little bit more grip, a little bit more travel, which is cool. The only thing I don't like is that there's no real way to get the actual button pictures on the little buttons. So like, because Sony's copyrighted the square, circle, triangle, and cross, they can't actually put that on there. And that also extends to the PlayStation button. You get the little Hex Gaming logo, but that's like less egregious to me. I just, I wish I could have got the PlayStation buttons on the buttons, but having matte black buttons is pretty cool. Now this controller has regular triggers, which is fine. So if you want to make sure you have a pro option that has regular triggers, this is definitely the one to go with. You can also customize those. So I made the R1 and L1 black, but I made the triggers red because I thought that looked cool, even though I never see them. And then finally, this one also has the back pedal attachment, which you can also customize the color of. Now Hex has a bunch of different designs for their colorways too. They have like a Japanese wave. They have some other stuff that's not official, but it looks pretty cool. So if you want a picture on your controller versus having a clear one or a solid color, they got you covered. Now, one thing everyone who buys a PlayStation 5 should go get immediately is a headset with a good mic, because while there is a microphone in your DualSense, it defaults to on, which is super annoying, and then also it's very bad. So when I'm playing Back for Blood, every time I get into a game, I just hear people breathing and eating chips now, because the PlayStation microphone is defaulted to on in the DualSense, and the game defaults to having the mic always open. So no matter what, just because you have a mic on the controller, whenever you get a new multiplayer game, just go ahead and go into the settings and see if your mic is set to always on because no one wants to hear
hear your mom yelling at you to take a shower because you haven't showered in five weeks because you're a gamer, you know? So one option you've got is the official one, which is the Sony Pulse Wireless 3D headset. Now people swear by this thing. I didn't like it when it originally came out. I thought the base was a little weird and just, it sounded a little tinny to me. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't love it all that much, but they've updated the PS5 since then and they added a feature in the last big update that allows you to mess with the EQ of these bad boys. And that turned out to be the only issue. You just have to mess around with the sound settings on your PS5 and once you get it just right, they actually sound really good. It was more a PS5 end thing than a headphone end thing, which is awesome. These things also only run you around a hundred bucks, which is pretty cheap and they feel pretty high quality for a hundred bucks. I mean, they're all plastic and rubber. They're kind of light, but the battery lasts a long time and they feel sturdy, which is important. And finally, they're comfortable. That's the most important thing here, I think, is that they're comfortable. They fit good on your ears. They've got nice cushions. They feel like a nice premium headset that you only paid a hundred dollars for. And the best part is, they come in black. Sony has an official black option for these, as well as the DualSense. Come on guys, give us those dark plates, the official ones, we need them. Another option which is a little bit more expensive at $139-ish that I honestly prefer is the SteelSeries Arctis 7P. Now SteelSeries has two versions of the Arctis 7. They have Arctis 7X and P. X obviously stands for Xbox, that one comes in black and will not work on your PS5. So they're losing points there for not having a black option for PS5 because the 7P only comes in white. But it sounds really good, it's really well constructed, the speakers sound just a little bit better to me overall, even after you tune this Pulse 3D wireless headset, it still sounds a little bit worse than the Arctis 7P. That's just my opinion, and you might like the other one better, it's totally down to your personal taste. My favorite thing about the 7P though, versus the Pulse 3D wireless headset, is that the Pulse 3D headset comes with a USB-A little dongle, and it's huge. It also feels very cheap, whereas the 7P comes with a USB-C one that's very nondescript, understated, it also works with the Nintendo Switch, which is great, and your PC. So if you want a pair of headphones that you can use on your PS5 and your Switch effortlessly and wirelessly, you should definitely go with the Arctis 7P. Both of these headsets also take advantage of 3D audio, which is a feature that Sony's pretty good about supporting on their first party games. The game that I noticed it the most in was Ghost of Tsushima. It sounds awesome in that game. So if you've never tried 3D audio and you get one of these headsets, make sure you go into the settings and have it turned on because it really needs to be heard to be believed. It's like virtual surround sound that actually works. And as far as customization goes, if you're not a fan of the white PS5 like me personally, there are a few options for you, but they're dwindling pretty quick. So dbrand came out of the gate with a pair of dark plates that were really cutting it close to the PlayStation 5 official version. They even had the little texture on the inside that totally did not have the PlayStation buttons, but totally did. Like the circle was a radioactive sign, the triangle was like a danger sign, but they had all of the different things there. Sony, of course, turned around and sued them and said, yeah, we just got a patent for the design on these plates, so you're gonna have to change it up if you wanna keep using them. So that's exactly what dbrand did. They came out with a whole new bunch of different plates for the PS5, and they're calling it Dark Plates 2.0. Now these ones look different than the Sony ones. You know how the Sony ones have those fins? These new Dark Plates are kind of flush with the side of the console, and personally, I don't really like that. And they also add functionality by having cutouts for the fans, which is another thing that, yes, it does add a little bit more thermal performance, but for me, I don't really like the way that looks. But if you're one of those people who thinks it's cool, they've got a lot of options for you. First of all, they have a black one, of course. They also have a white one for people who really like having a white PS5, but want a little bit more thermal performance out of it and like the more flush look of the D-brand plates. Which again, if you have an entertainment center that's like small, right? Like you can only fit so much in there and you are just missing it by a hair with your PS5, maybe these new dark plates are the ones to go with because they'll make your PS5 a little bit smaller. Not by a lot, just a little bit smaller. And then finally, they have a PS1 styled gray version, which if I was gonna get any of them knowing that I already have the original dark plates, that might be the one I go with because I love that PS1 gray, it just looks awesome. And then alongside this whole huge update where they came out with the dark plates 2.0, they also announced light strips that you can put perfectly over the blue and orange light on your PS5 to make it different, right? You can have a blue on one side and orange on the other. They have multiple different colors. Honestly, I might have to pick a pair of those up because it looks really sweet having like black plates on my PS5 and then maybe I could get orange lights to make it a Halloween themed one or something like that. And then finally they have a skin that you can put down the middle of your PS5 that'll protect it from scratches. And guys, if you've never looked at your PS5, if you've ever moved it at all, go check it out because that middle strip scratches so easily. I don't know why, but it's like the easiest thing to scratch of all time. So if you really want to keep your PS5 looking fresh and new, get one of these skins because it'll protect your console perfectly. 
And then the last accessory is of course PSVR, but I'm not gonna tell you to go out and buy the PSVR one because that thing has aged not great. It's pretty old at this point. It has a really bad screen door effect and no one really wants to use move controllers with VR anymore. So we're just gonna speculate a little bit and I'm gonna talk about what I want out of the PSVR 2. So I actually have an Oculus Quest 2 and basically what I want is for Sony to lift everything cool about that device for the PSVR 2. Of course, if they could figure out a way to make it wireless with the PS5, that would be incredible because the last thing anyone wants wants now that you can do wireless VR with the Oculus Quest 2 is wires hanging off the back of their head. And I think they could do it if they just had the headset linked to the PS5's Wi-Fi card wirelessly, but even though I say that, I feel like at the end of the day, we're probably gonna have a wired headset. So hopefully they can just shrink it down to one cord that goes straight into the console instead of having that middle box to do more processing power like you have with the PSVR 1. Another thing they obviously have to improve is the screen. Now it looked good at the time, but if you go back to the PSVR after using pretty much any other headset out there, it's going to look horrible. Now they did a really good job on the Oculus Quest 2 increasing the resolution so that you see virtually no pixels. That's what I want out of the PSVR 2. But where I want them to beat Oculus is by including OLED screens because Oculus, when they upgraded to the Oculus Quest 2, they got rid of OLED and replaced it with LCD. And even though it looks really good because there's no pixels now, you still see a little bit of gray when you go to black, but if they had OLED like they did on the Quest 1, you would see pure blacks, which is what I want out of the PSVR 2. Another thing that would be great is if they can make it lighter. I saw this concept for the Magic Leap VR 2, and it really just looks like a pair of sunglasses. Now, obviously the reason they don't do that is because you need a seal on your face to stop light from getting in, because that's what takes away the immersion of VR. But if they could figure out a way to make it lighter and smaller, like the Magic Leap 2, for example, and to have a way for it to have a seal over your eyes, that would be so dope. I would love that because having a VR headset hanging off the front of your head, it gives you neck pain after a while and no one wants that. And then finally, this is more on the PS5 side of the equation, but I would really like it if they went back and updated all of the VR games they've already released to run better on the PS5 and the PSVR 2. Obviously, they don't run as well because they're older games and, you know, having stuff like Resident Evil 7, because that's the only place you can play it is the PSVR, running and looking a lot better on the PSVR 2 would just be golden. Like, if they had a way to say that Resident Evil 7 is now updated for the PSVR 2 and it's going to stay exclusive, that would get me to go out and buy a PSVR 2 immediately because that's my, like, probably top three favorite horror game of all time and just playing that in VR would be absolutely terrifying. I remember I got to play it early on the original PSVR and that screen door effect did something to my brain and I ended up throwing up after, but I powered through. I powered through the entire demo. I was sweating in that headset. I was feeling queasy and again, yeah, I threw up after that demo. So if they can figure out a way to update that game to not look horrible on the PSVR 2, that'd be incredible. I was gonna say I hope they have better controllers for it so we don't have to use the PlayStation Move controllers, but they've actually already teased us and showed us an image of what the controllers are gonna look like on the VR 2 and they look just like the Oculus Touch controllers and those work great, so I'm fine with that. If you really wanna take advantage of your PS5 and how good games look on it, you're probably gonna wanna upgrade your TV to an OLED. Now, LG is kind of like the king of the hill here. Is that the phrase? Yeah, that is the phrase. Now, with LG, you go with the C1 or the A1. The C1 is only 1300 bucks for a 48-inch OLED, which is a pretty good price, and you'll definitely see the upgrade if you're on an LCD TV, even if you're going to a smaller size than what you have. But if you want to spend a little bit more, you can get an LG A1 for $1,600, and that one's going to be a 65-inch. So a $300 upsell doesn't seem all that bad. And then on the Sony end, you have the A80J, which for $1,800, you can get a 65 inch TV, which is pretty good. And then if you really want to splurge, you can get a 77 inch for $3,000, which is a ton of money. Now, the reason you might want to go with the Sony ones though, is because Sony is adding this technology to the PS5 called auto tone mapping, which is just a ripoff of Dolby Vision. But if it works, how Dolby Vision works, you're going to want it because instead of like HDR, which just does a baseline recolor of the content you're watching or playing, uh, Sony auto tone mapping or Dolby Vision do it for frame by frame and it looks incredible. If you've ever gone to the movie theater and seen a Dolby movie, it just looks so much better that way. Like the blacks are blacker and the colors are richer. And it's something that seems like it's gonna be a gimmick, but then you see it and you're like, man, I guess I'm gonna only watch Dolby movies from now on. Like Halloween Kills and Dolby last weekend, Oh man, so good. Anyway guys, those are all the accessories you need for your brand new PlayStation 5. If you pick any of these up, let me know which one and what you think of it down in the comments below. And remember, if you wanna stay PS ready, subscribe and set your notifications to all. As always guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.